I'm Fade FX. I'm a world-renowned dotwork tattooist. I'm also the only European who has been taught the ancient skill of hand tap tattooing from Borneo. I've travelled the world tattooing and being tattooed. The method of tattooing and culture based around this practice is unique in Borneo. I wanted to document it before it's lost with the elder generation, as tattooing stopped here after the tribes converted to Christianity. I'll be interviewing the new generation of tattooists who have emerged since the revival. After, I'll be travelling deep into the jungle to speak with the most recently converted tribes about tattoo history and tribal culture. We spoke to one of the most informed historians in Sarawak, Leo from the Sarawak Cultural Village. Okay, most of uh, the history um, started back then. How did people know so much about Bonny Island is because of the headhunting done by the people, our people, the tribe. War broke out between the tribes, you know, uh, small scale, big scales, taking people's head, especially the enemies, right? And before the white Raja came. So when people talk about headhunting, they thought that we take everyone's head. No, wrong. No, there is a court of honor. You don't take people's head just for granted. And we don't take women's and children's head. But men, yeah, beware. The warrior, leader, chiefs, beware. We get your head. But the women's and children, we let it go. You know, when our people want to attack the enemy, we're going to send out a warning. You know, we send out a warning. Why we send out a warning? So that the women's and children go away first. So left the men behind to defend the house. And then uh, when a man in you know, a tribe, let's say coming of age, you know, he's like plain on his body, nothing at all, you know. When he joined the first, what we call it, uh, war or head hunting, go and come back and he succeed in what he's doing. He had a piece of uh, enemy's head in his hand and come back, right? And then they will do a ritual for him, you know? He, he's, now he's a man, he's a real man. He can stick away an enemy's head in, right in his hand. So he might have uh, first like the brinjal flower on both sides, and then gonna have it here, second and third. Here in Borneo, we have more than uh, 30 different tribes, the big groups and the subgroup. Okay, first one, let me introduce you to the Iban people. The Iban are known as the Sea Dayak. They're large, the most largest group of uh, indigenous or tribe people here we have in Borneo, especially in Sarawak. Right? In Sarawak and a bit in Sabah, in Brunei, in Kalimantan, Indonesia. That is the part of island of Borneo. The tattoos that you see, like the, what we have, uh, the, the younger people or the elders, they have their you know, shoulders on the throat and the fingers and the legs and the backs, their butts even their ankles and everything, you know. Uh, most people with a lot of tattoos is the Iban people. And why they have tattoos back then? It signifies something they have done and achieved in life. And uh, it shows that this guy been through a lot of things to become a man and to become a survivor and uh, to be strong in his tribe and also to protect his tribe. I met with Jeremy Lowe, internationally respected hand tap tattooer, at an Orang Ulu longhouse. He taught himself tattooing back when everyone in Borneo had stopped. It was him who passed down the skill to me. Hand tap tattooing is very easy. Two sticks, that's it. Or just, it works with two sticks, one with a needle tied in end, and the other works as a hammer. And basically it's just a, the size and the length depending on what, what tattoo you're doing, which part of the body. Different parts need different sizes, just like the machine. Different needles, different tubes, and different kind of machine. So, this holds the needle, and the other as the hammer. And the voltage is your hands. Tattoo ink, they use the ash or like burnt carbon from below the pot and just scrape it off and mix with sugar cane water, boil down and mix the texture 
and it's easy to tattoo. The tribal culture here in Borneo, um, back in the days, people just want to just want to get tattoos. It's aesthetics. It's just to show. It's just to show off. It's just to show to the other. You know, it's just to show to the other village. I have more tattoos than you, so I'm better than you. The Highlanders only the women get tattoo. So when they, you know, when they have daughters, the daughters, they will get all their daughters to tattoo and just to show off to the other village that they have money, you know, they have money, they have wealth, they have strength, uh, you know, power. When you have visitors that come to your village or come to your longhouse and you can see, hey, you know, wow, your daughters have a lot of tattoos, very beautiful. My man in my longhouse will want to marry your woman in your longhouse. So for the Iban ladies, uh, when you see that they have those uh, like a bracelet arm bracelet design on their arms or the anklets or a, a single line they have on the, the fingers and also three dots here, it represent that she's important kind of woman in, in our tribe in Iban. She could be a uh, good weaver, a master weaver. She could be uh, very good in medicines like as a shaman or whatever, you know. And also uh, she's good in house chores or taking care of their farm when the men are going away, working or traveling or war back then, she would take care of all things. So it signifies that woman is something, she's special, she's not any ordinary woman. It symbolizes status. From which family of caste you are? Are you from the high caste, the middle class or the lower class? The meanings of tribal tattooing in Borneo has changed and it's always changing. The meaning changed because of uh, bullshit from tourists, right? They, okay, not bullshit from tourists. I think it's like this. Tourists come, they want to get a tattoo, they want to get a meaning, meaningful tattoo and tattoo artists made it up to make money. It's all made up to make money. It's like, uh, for example, the most made up joke about Borneo tattooing is the is a spiral Borneo life thing that your journey I think that it starts because of uh, tourists that come they want a story they want a fantasy story to bring back to their country and of course tattoo artists just uh, just made up all the stories you know just made up protection, this, and safe journey, this, and whatever, just to make money. The more you pay, the more meaningful it is. Easy, now it's like that. You know, back in the days, it's simple. I got tattoo, I got bigger tattoo than you, I can stand more pain than you. That's it, I'm, I'm a badass, you know? <laughs> so where are we going then, Fred? Uh We are going to Skrang River, and we're gonna go to a longhouse called Nangamura. And then from there, Tomorrow, I think we're going to take the boat further up the river and go to another longhouse. The Skrang River was a day's drive from Kuching. We travelled through primary rainforest and over mountains in a hired four-wheel drive with our new camera assistants and translator, Ezra and Pai, and our guide and good friend, Boy Skrang. We travelled from longhouse to longhouse up the river, searching for those from the traditional tribal generation to interview, as there are few left now. So we've just got to a part of the river that's a village called Murat, and there's a concrete longhouse here. It used to be wooden, but they've changed it all. And we're going to get a boat up the river to another village where there's a wooden longhouse, which is where we're going to stay tonight and look for some elderly people with the traditional tattoos. Um, and it's quite shocking actually arriving here because this is where I've always come to get the boat to these longhouses when I've stayed with the tribes before. Um, and this river used to be blue and clear, um, and they rely a lot on the fish source from this river for you know their staple diet and uh, for washing as well and as you can see the river's brown now this is because more loggers have come and gone up river and took the bigger trees so it's polluted the entire river and um, when it's brown like this you get more crocodiles so it's, it's more dangerous to swim so this is the village Murat and this is the old long house you can see the back of it the front's actually cut away now they recycled the wood um, but yeah, you can see this is the old long house made out of corrugated tin. That noise is pigs. <laughs> and then this is the new long house made of concrete. And um, yeah, so you can see how, how it was and how it is now. This part of the long house is called the Rawai, which is like the common area corridor. Um, 
yeah, the old one, long houses, it's all just wooden. And everyone sits around socialising, this is like the social area. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's like pretty shiny, pretty modern. It's not much different from a city house now. And there's no one in it. Partly the time of day, some people are out working. Um, but partly there's just not, not the same amount of people in long houses anymore. The kids move, move away, get city jobs. Ah, oh, he's a tattoo guy. He's the only one in the village. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one day and continue this one, next day, yeah. and next day, this one, and next day, this one, and next day, this one. Next day, this one. Uh, were they consecutive days? Sorry? Yes. Consecutive days, yeah, yeah. so he did all of that in one yeah, week, yeah, yeah, like yeah, day yeah. after I, day. Like, yeah, yeah. And day after. And wow. Week, uh, yeah. In one week. Yeah. 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 What's this place called? This one? Mijong. 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 <laughs> so yeah, we're just crossing the river in the boat because the bridge up here fell in. So we're just um, just going from one side to the other on the boat. Stopping here tonight. <laughs> This is the wooden long house that we took lodgings in last night. This is the communal part of the building, the Rawai corridor where everyone sits and does craft work or whatever. And we had a barbecue outside on the porch last night, but this morning all the tattooed elders are away at a funeral, so we can't speak with them. So we're going to continue our search and go further up the river by boat to Boy's long house. The road was quite dangerous as it was muddy and monsoon rains had been heavy and we didn't have the correct tyres for off-road driving. Oh good. Maybe the, she's tired. We waited at the riverside while hours passed. We'd sent a message for Boy's aunt and uncle to meet us with the boat here, but there's no signal, landlines, internet or postal service, so we had no idea if they were coming. We became anxious we'd be stuck here for the night. Appai and Endai arrived, and we were relieved as we'd just given up hope. I was pleased we'd not have to make camp here for the night, and we could continue our journey upriver. I stayed at Entelau Longhouse several times in the past, and Endai had adopted me as a daughter. It felt a bit like coming home. Travelling upriver was usually a beautiful journey through the freshest air and thick rainforest. Last year when I came, there'd been the first signs of logging. This time, there were not so many areas untouched. Trees here are mostly being cut for palm oil, which is added to a surprising number of products worldwide, and teak furniture. It was heartbreaking to see these people's environment destroyed. My first visits to the village years ago, the community lived in a wooden longhouse, but since, they've finished the construction of this concrete longhouse. arrived at Ulu Sprang, which is Boy's Longhouse. It's a concrete longhouse, it's a bit more developed than the last one. And um, it's monsoon season in Borneo, so this is what we're up against. 
but we got here just in time for the rains to come. The second we walked in the house, it absolutely came down, so yeah, we're quite lucky. Wooden longhouses could be repaired and sustained from their jungle. The concrete one requires money to maintain. This is the family's part of the new longhouse, which is similar to a modern Asian house. I caught up and prepared dinner with the family. There was even a local delicacy on offer. You're going to eat one of them things? You ready? Our final night in Ulu Skrang, we made tattoo tools out of kindling sticks and I tattooed one of the villagers in the Ruai. I had just showered and was ready to sleep so I was not expecting this spontaneous opportunity to tattoo a member of this longhouse. <laughs> we met Brian at a barbecue in the village the night before and he agreed to talk with us about the old ways. <laughs> Ada <laughs> Iban tu kelia, lepas orang bisik mimpi, ah mimpi bisik tulung tanya, bisik tulung antu, bisik tulung ular, bisik tulung naga semua. Aku nama ni Maya Dana. Aku lepas ada di tu, aku dia dah tak tahu dah. Abu kau tak tahu. Mak ya masuk ada diri ya, ada orang yang tahu ya. Tahu. Ada yang ada itu, ada semua angkat yang masuk diri aja. Masuk diri, masuk orang masuk. Ah, siapa orang kat masuk masuk, siapa enggak ina. When Christianity came and converted the tribes here, they stopped tattooing, thinking that uh, tattooing is the thing of the past. If you don't, that's what the, the, the you know, the, what do you call the missionaries? That's what they tell the tribes here. They say, if you do not join, convert to Christian, you would not be accepted in the world. Christianity is like a credit card, you know, you can use around the world. If you do not have that, you cannot, be in the future. You are just a, a pagan in the jungle, which means you are left behind and you are nothing. So they throw away everything, also tattooing. So the ones that have half tattoo, they just stop. And the rest just did not pass down to one generation. So most of them just don't want to talk about it. Because if you talk about it, you are like the past. Now. I try to uh, uh, revive again, you know, uh, the, 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 the Iban tattoo. This one is uh, Ngkabang Labua. Ngkabang Labua is mean like uh, the leaf uh, fall down like a four pillar, you know. Uh, four, 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 what is that? Four pillar, yeah. Stomach, stomach. Yeah, my stomach, okay. This is uh, the Dayak mask. Yeah, it's a, it's a customized design. By, uh, by my friend from uh, Indonesia. Okay. When I when I in Holland, I get this like the the windmill. Yeah. Because it's famous in Holland in you know, the windmill. Yeah. Because I, I like 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 uh, in Iban. If I if uh, the Iban travel uh, to to the place to one place, they get a travel uh, statue uh, top yeah? like like a stamp. Bands have recently took a liking to karaoke. There are karaoke videos of their pop stars like Ricky L, who are popular in the longhouses. Drinking moonshine, which they call Lankau, and rice wine, which is called Tuak, are very popular here. 
Okay. Cockfighting and gambling is also a popular pastime in the village. ตัวเลียกตัวตัวผัวอะไรกะกะปิงไกคนนี้ตุญุตงกุลาตุญุเลียเลียเลียดกะญูบกะเตมนอลินตวงโกจะกะกะดิบันเด้นะกะเลียด
to to get the tree and uh, the, the the company give money to to the chief. Uh, it's not it's not much, you know. But for money, the the the, the chief just take it, you know. Just take. Okay, okay, I take. Uh, okay, okay, I agree with you. I take this money. Then okay, you go take take the tree, you know. And I hope one day government maybe have some solution, maybe do some plantation and cut some tree plantation and then cut the timber company from cutting our tree. So our next generation know that we have a lot of beautiful, beautiful jungle and beautiful animal in our place. That's it's really hard to find from other places. The future of tribal tattooing in Borneo, the, the new generations are, are doing newer designs, newer patterns because of the equipment and uh, you know, more influence from the outside world. So patterns are changing, which is also based on the old, old way, which is I think is really good. And in the future, I don't think the, the, the traditional tattoo will be, will be lost, you know, because um, the appreciation is there, the understanding is there, and uh, um, the, the knowledge is already starting now. Mayo, Machamokir, Manamana. Oh, Taukir, Banza, Tadia, Tok Lion, Lukukis, Maranda. Padamlah pengawaknya bakal ada asal teriak ni. Yang saya patut ada pajak pengawak tu. Dia tu dia mayung banyak. Orang dulu dia bisik sikut lelaki tahu. Nama agak bunga itu. Udah mayung saya tak serumah. Udah agak tu itu. Tang tu tak berapa tu pada aku. Kalau tu luntur. Tattoo connects people no matter where you come from religion, country, nation, race, color of your skin, it connects you anyway. Tattoos has no barrier, they can be anywhere, and it connects people, no matter where you come from. What we've learned through this journey is that Iban tattooing is going through a revival among the new generation who celebrate their heritage. With modern influences shaping their world, who knows where the future of Iban tattooing will take us? <laughs>